Are you confident your Linux systems are secure? Think again. A critical vulnerability in OpenSSH has just been uncovered, allowing hackers to gain root access to millions of systems worldwide. If you're using SSH for remote access or management, your entire network could be at risk. This is a game-changing exploit that's sending shockwaves through the cybersecurity community. In today's video, we uncover a shocking new SSH exploit that's putting Linux systems at risk. Let's find out how this vulnerability works and its potential impact. So, make sure to stick around until the end. OpenSSH maintainers have recently released security updates to address a severe vulnerability that could result in unauthenticated remote code execution with root privileges on Glibc-based Linux systems. It's a full-blown security crisis that's putting millions of systems at risk. This vulnerability has been given the rather ominous code name regression and has been assigned to CVE identifier CVE 2024-6387. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly is affected? Well, the vulnerability resides in the OpenSSH server component, also known as SSHD. For those who might not be familiar with it, SSHD is the part of OpenSSH that listens for connections from client applications. In other words, it's the gatekeeper of your system when it comes to SSH connections. Bharat Jogi, the senior director of the Threat Research Unit at Qualys, a prominent cybersecurity firm, has described this vulnerability as a signal handler race condition in OpenSSH server. That might sound like a mouthful of technical jargon, but what it essentially means is that there is a flaw in how the SSH server handles certain operations creating a window of opportunity for attackers to exploit. This vulnerability is particularly concerning because it affects SSHD in its default configuration. This means that you could still be vulnerable, even if you haven't made any custom changes to your SSH setup. It's a summering reminder that sometimes, even the out-of-the-box settings we assume to be secure can harbor hidden dangers. The cybersecurity researchers of Qualys have identified no less than 14 million potentially vulnerable open SSH server instances exposed to the internet. That's not just a few isolated systems. It's a vast attack surface that could potentially be exploited by malicious actors. But here's where things get even more interesting and concerning. This vulnerability isn't entirely new. In fact, it's a regression of an already patched 18-year-old flaw tracked as CVE 2006 5051. For those keeping score, that's a vulnerability from 2006 that was supposedly fixed, only to rear its ugly head again in October 2020 with the release of OpenSSH version 8.5p1. This regression shows that even when vulnerabilities are patched, there is always the risk that future updates or changes could inadvertently reintroduce old problems. According to OpenSSH's own advisory, Successful exploitation has been demonstrated on 32-bit Linux Glibc systems with address space layout randomization. They go on to state that under lab conditions, the attack requires on average 6 to 8 hours of continuous connections up to the maximum the server will accept. This might sound like a long time, and you might be tempted to think that such a lengthy exploitation process would be easily noticed. However, in the world of cybersecurity, Determined attackers often play the long game. A patient attacker could potentially carry out this exploit over an extended period, flying under the radar of many detection systems. Let's delve deeper into which versions of OpenSSH are affected by this vulnerability. The regression flaw impacts versions between 8.5p1 and 9.7p1, but that's not all. Versions prior to 4.4p1 are also vulnerable to this race condition bug unless they have been specifically patched for CVE 2006-5051 and CVE 2008-4109. It's a wide net that catches many systems in use today. Interestingly, OpenBSD systems are unaffected by this vulnerability because OpenBSD includes a security mechanism that effectively blocks this flaw. This highlights the importance of proactive security measures and the value of learning from different operating system approaches. But what about other popular operating systems? Well, it's likely that this security shortcoming also affects macOS and Windows. However, 
its exploitability on these platforms remains unconfirmed and requires more analysis. This uncertainty underscores the complexity of modern operating systems and the challenges faced by cybersecurity researchers in fully understanding the scope of such vulnerabilities. Qualys, in their detailed analysis, found that if a client doesn't authenticate within 120 seconds, a setting defined by logging race time, then SSHD SIG alarm handler is called asynchronously in a manner that's not async signal safe. This means that there's a small window of opportunity where the system is vulnerable to attack. The consequences of exploiting CVE 2024-6387 are severe and far-reaching. A successful exploit could lead to a full system compromise and takeover. This means that the threat actors could potentially execute arbitrary code with the highest privileges subvert security mechanisms, steal sensitive data, and even maintain persistent access to the compromised system. Imagine a scenario where an attacker gains root access to a critical server in your organization. They could potentially access confidential data, modify system configurations, install backdoors for feature access, and use the compromised system as a launchpad to attack other systems in your network. The potential for damage is enormous, and the consequences could be catastrophic for businesses and organizations of all sizes. Bharat Jogi from Qualys put it succinctly when he said, a flaw once fixed has reappeared in a subsequent software release, typically due to changes or updates that inadvertently reintroduce the issue. This incident shows the importance of thorough regression testing and preventing the reintroduction of known vulnerabilities into the environment. This vulnerability will be exploited on a massive scale. Cybersecurity firms Palo Alto, Networks Unit 42, and Wiz have weighed in on this. They suggest that the vulnerability is unlikely to be subjected to widespread or opportunistic exploitation because an attacker must know in advance what Linux distribution they are targeting to build a functional exploit. Another factor that's likely to prevent mass exploitation is the time it takes to complete an attack. As mentioned earlier, it can take as long as eight hours and require as many as 10,000 authentication steps. Kaspersky, another major player in the cybersecurity field, pointed this out, although they were quick to add that it doesn't rule out the possibility of highly targeted exploitation. Oligo, a cybersecurity expert, elaborated on this point, stating, the specific nature of the race condition and its exploitation require a significant number of attempts to achieve successful execution with varying success rates depending on the version and environment. In other words, while the vulnerability is serious, exploiting it at a scale presents significant challenges. However, and this is crucial to understand, the difficulty of exploitation doesn't mean we can ignore this vulnerability. In the world of cybersecurity, what's challenging today might become trivial tomorrow as new techniques and tools are developed. Moreover, high-value targets might still be at risk from determined, well-resourced attackers who are willing to put in the time and effort required for a successful exploit. So, what can you do to protect your systems from this vulnerability? The most important step is to apply the latest patches as soon as possible. OpenSSH maintainers have released security updates to address this issue, and you must implement these patches to secure your systems against potential threats. But patching isn't the only step you should take. It's also advisable to limit SSH access through network-based controls. This means implementing strict firewall rules, using virtual private networks for remote access, and possibly even considering jump servers for added security by limiting who can access your SSH servers and from where you significantly reduce your attack surface. Another crucial step is to enforce network segmentation. This strategy involves dividing your network into smaller isolated segments. By doing so, you restrict unauthorized access and lateral movement within your environment. Even if an attacker manages to compromise one segment, they will find it much harder to move to other parts of your network. OpenSSH, designed to provide secure channels over unsecured networks in a client-server architecture, is widely used by enterprises for remote server management and secure data communications. It plays a critical role in maintaining the confidentiality and integrity of network communications worldwide. All the organizations and firms using OpenSSH might be worried about their security, but using the latest patches might reduce the risk to a greater extent. The complexity of this vulnerability is both good news and bad news. 
The good news is that it's not easy to exploit, which reduces the likelihood of widespread opportunistic attacks. The bad news is that it's still a serious vulnerability that could be exploited by determined attackers, especially against high-value targets. Qualys, the cybersecurity firm that discovered this flaw, identified over 14 million potentially vulnerable open SSH server instances exposed to the internet. The researchers have also provided technical details to assist with remediation efforts. While they have not released proof of concept code to prevent malicious exploitation, they have shared indicators of compromise to help organizations detect potential attacks. The severity of this vulnerability lies in what an attacker could potentially do if they successfully exploit it. With root access, an attacker could execute arbitrary code with the highest privileges, subvert security mechanisms, steal sensitive data, install malware, create backdoors for persistent access, and use the compromised system as a launchpad for further attacks. The potential for damage is enormous, especially for businesses and organizations that rely heavily on Linux systems and SSH for secure communications and remote management. So, what do you think about the re-emergence of old vulnerabilities in modern software? Have you ever experienced a security breach due to a similar issue? Let us know in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.